Hey everyone, Bassman Strikes here. So what we're going to do today is we're going to make a gear track adapter for an Atwood light pole. And we're going to use some PVC and some other off-the-shelf components that you probably have sitting around. Alright, so what we're going to do now is we're going to go over the parts that you'll need. First, you'll need two two-inch PVC end caps, and they have to be these flat ones. And what we're going to do is we're going to drill a 5 16 hole in one and a 1 and 1 8 hole in another. Alright, the next piece you're going to need is a 2 inch PVC coupling. And so obviously these are going to go in here. And we're going to glue those in after we drill the holes. And we're also going to use a prong nut here. So we'll get to that in a minute. So the next part you'll need, you'll need an Atwood round light base. You can get these on Amazon. I think they're about, I don't know, 13 to 14 dollars. Next thing you'll need is a T-bolt. And it's pretty obvious what we're going to use that for. You also need a quarter inch 20 prong T-nut. And that's what we're going to use for the track bolt on the bottom of this thing. You'll need a small gland nut. This is what we're going to run the wire through. And then that you can connect it up to your electrical system with whatever connectors uh, you use. And finally, we're going to use some of these two inch neoprene washers. And that's going to go on the bottom here to provide some cushion. So when you crank this down on your gear track, it's not going to scratch everything up. Oh, and you also need some screws. You'll need number 10 by one half inch. All right, so as far as tools that you'll need, you'll need something to drill the big hole for the base, and I'm going to use a step bit. This goes up to one and one eighths, which is exactly the size we need. I mean, you could probably use a coping saw or anything just to cut the hole. But this, this is by far the easiest. Next, you'll need some sort of straight edge. And I'll show you what we'll use that for in a little bit. You'll need some PVC glue to glue it together so it doesn't come apart on you. A pencil or a Sharpie to make marks on the PVC and a drill with a 5 16 and this is we're going to use this to mount the T-bolt track nut and you'll see what we do here it's pretty actually pretty cool and you'll need a pair of pliers or something to hold this prong T-nut because what we're going to do is we're going to heat this up and we're going to tap it into the hole we drill so the prong T-nuts go into the PVC so we'll just we'll heat it up with a torch. You can use anything to heat this up. A heat gun would work too. So what you're going to do is you're going to heat it up and that'll get the prongs nice and hot and it'll sink into the PVC. If you try and tap this in without heating it up, it won't work. It'll just bend these and it won't secure it in. And this thing actually fits perfectly in that end cap. So we'll get to that in a bit. And I'm going to use a propane torch to heat it up. You can use whatever you like. Like I said, a heat gun, probably even a lighter would work. Anything just to get it hot so it melts the PVC or softens it. All right, so let's get started. The first thing we're going to do, we're going to use one of the end caps and we're going to use a straight edge. And what we're going to do is we're going to try and find a relative center. It doesn't have to be exact, but what we're going to do is we're going to just connect these these points on this cap and that'll give us a center. So what you do, just line up your straight edge, boom, boom. You can do just two or you can just do them all. I'm just going to do them all. Alright, 
So that's where we want the center hole to be. And this is gonna be our base where the T-nut's gonna go. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna drill a 5 16 hole here to accommodate that prong T-nut. So I'm gonna take my drill, and I'm simply gonna drill right through this sucker, just like this. Just try and keep it as straight as you can. You can use a punch if you want, but this PVC is actually pretty soft. It's pretty easy, You won't the drill won't drift. get it started and push it through. You don't want to damage whatever surface you're working on unless you have a pad. So I'm just going to go like this. Alright, so there we have our 5 16 hole. And then what we're going to do we're going to heat this up and then we're gonna place it in here, and then we're gonna tap it in. And when we're done, you'll see that it comes out perfectly flush. And it's gonna work out really great. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna heat that prong nut up, and then I'm gonna tap it in with this extension and this hammer. And I'm gonna do it on this piece of cardboard. You wanna protect your surfaces. You don't wanna get your wife mad at you. <laughs> so anyway, what we're gonna do, Use a pair of pliers or whatever. And then heat this up. And then we're going to drop it in there and tap it in. Like I said before, if you don't do that, it'll just bend the prongs when, if you try and pound it into this, it won't work. So let's fire up the torch. Okay, dial it down just a bit. All right, get your prong nut. You want to make sure you heat up the the prongs. All right, so just heat that sucker up. So what I'm doing, I'm just putting this in the flame on the torch, getting it nice and hot. All right, that should do it. We're going to drop it in. All right, we're going to tap it in. You can use anything to tap this in. It doesn't really matter. really good all right shut off the torch and you gotta let this cool it's still pretty hot give it a few more taps make sure those prongs are in there good and just apply some pressure on there while it's cooling All right, so let's take a look. I think it turned out pretty good. And what you can do is you can put a little epoxy around there, around the edges. Because remember, you're gonna be you're gonna be tightening this, so it's always gonna be pulling down on that nut. But it's not a big deal. I would just put a little JB weld around there, bada boom, bada bang, that thing's never gonna come out. So what it looks like on the bottom is gonna be perfect. So we take our T-bolt, and we can just screw that in just like this. So there you have it folks, the bottom is done. And after we're all done, Oh, 
we'll glue this on here just like that your t-bolt will go through and you've got yourself a super nice gear track adapter look at that you can't beat that all right so the next thing we're going to do we're going to glue this in this bottom piece is done so i mean that thing's embedded in there it melted the pvc it's not going anywhere so what we're going to do next is we're going to glue this bottom part in just like that so we're going to put a very small amount of glue you don't need primer because this isn't this isn't a plumbing application all right so take your glue you don't need a lot and this stuff really smells so just do it as fast as you can that's all you need close this up put it away take your base Give it a couple turns and push it down. There we go. The bottom is done. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do the top. All right, so we're gonna do the top now and you're gonna have to do the same thing. Use your straight edge and find the center. It doesn't have to be super accurate. Just do all, all the points and I'll give you the best center mark so there we found our center now we're going to take the same 5 16 drill bit that we used for the bottom to start the pilot hole for the step bit alright so we're just going to drill right down through the center just like we did before pick it up like this so you don't damage your surface all right then we're going to switch over to the step bit So the step bit goes up to one in, in one eighth, which is the size we're gonna need for this. All right, so once we get it going, we'll test fit it to make sure, because we don't wanna actually make it too big, which it, it can go a little bit over one eighth. So we're just gonna drill this out until this fits. All right, so take your step bit and just drill through it. So you can see that's what kind of hole it makes sometimes you have to go on the other side to get it cleaned out and make it more even so just keep drilling and we're getting there A little bit more. It's getting there. Let's do a test fit. See where we're at. Okay, so it's close. A little bit more. Actually, I think if we just go through this side, that'll open it up enough and I think it'll fit. All right, let's do a little test fit here. There we go. Look at that. Perfect. Okay, you see then this flips open. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna drill holes here and secure this part in. 
So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to mark our holes. So you can see there's a small amount of play in here. So you want to get this to centered as close to center as you can get it. Just mark your holes. So that's where we're going to drill the holes and I'm going to use a 5 30 seconds bit to drill those and the threads are self tapping so we don't have to do anything else. So we put in our bit and what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill one and then I'm going to drill the rest after I secure the first one. So let's drill the first hole here. Kind of come in at a little angle and straighten it out. Okay, so let's secure the first one. So grab one of your Number 10 by half inch screws. So they look like that. Take your base. And secure one screw in. All right, it's a Phillips screwdriver. And just, it'll self tap as you screw it in. It's gonna be a little tight. pretty good so then I'm gonna drill the other holes now that this is in where I want it okay so I'm just gonna drill those straight through okay insert the other screws thread and then go to your screwdriver and get them in the rest of the way. You gotta get a little force because it's creating the threads. All right two down. one started they are a little tight because they're creating the threads as you go that's perfectly fine there we go folks the top is complete that's all there is to it bada boom bada bang so the final step is we're going to drill a hole on the side for the cable gland and then we're going to run the wires through there and then you can connect those up to whatever kind of cable you want. Uh, I suggest a round cable, it looks the best. You can get a two carrier round and uh, yeah, you can solder them, heat shrink them or use butt connectors, whatever you want. And then we're going to glue this in, and then when you need to access it again, you can just unscrew this. And uh, you can access the wiring that way. There's plenty of room to get in there. So let's go ahead and drill the hole for the cable gland. All right, so we're going to drill a hole for this cable gland, and it's pretty thick because you've got your cap in there as well. What I'm going to do is glue this in with epoxy or JB Weld. So we'll get it in there. It'll, it'll fit in there pretty tight. But there's no way we're going to get the backing nut on there. At least I don't think it'll fit. Yeah, it's not going to fit. So that's what we're going to do. A drill hole. Get it as, so this will kind of thread in and then glue it. So I'm going to drill the hole with the 5 16 and then open it up until it fits with the step bit. So just make a mark. It doesn't really matter where it goes. Just make it near the bottom someplace. So 
doesn't have to be exact. Alright, so that's where we're going to drill the hole for the cable gland. So I'm going to use the small bit that I use for the screws to start the hole. It's easier. So just put it somewhere in the center, it doesn't really matter. Alright, then we're going to switch over to the, the bigger bit, 5 sixteenths. it and we're going to switch over to the step bit you know there's multiple ways you can do this I'm just doing it with the tools I have and these cable glands are metric threads so I have no idea what size they are so I'm just gonna drill the hole until it fits so it's pretty close right now so we're just gonna open it up a bit And the step bit will leave it a little concave so there'll be room for the glue in there and the threads. Alright, it's almost there. Alright, so then just open up this hole until the cable gland fits. that step bit leaves a little ridge in there so you just gotta shave that down till this thing will thread in a little bit more It's starting to thread in and what we'll do is we'll glue that in with some epoxy a little later but just for the purposes of this video this is good enough it's in there pretty good so a little glue it's not going anywhere so then what you do is you just run your cable through here we're almost done with this folks so what you can do you can run this through and connect it on the outside to wherever your power source is with a longer cable or you can run your cable up through here and connect it outside either way so for the purposes of this video what we're gonna do we're just gonna slide these two through the cable gland and then we're gonna glue it on and then for further access, what you'll do is you'll remove these screws and take this out. And that's our little prong T-nut in there. It's nice and solid, it ain't going nowhere. So let's get these through. Like so. Pull those through like that and now we're going to glue this piece in we're almost done so we're going to take a little more glue remember you don't need a lot you're not doing plumbing you want to do this fast if you're doing it in the house all right just put a little bit all the way around don't need primer that's it Push it down and there you have it folks we have our Atwood light pole track adapter so let's put our t-bolt in with our neoprene which I recommend gluing on later screw in your track nut Now 
know, I just had these laying around. You can get smaller ones. I mean, shorter. You know what I mean? And there you have it. They sell these online for $70. And we just built this for under 20. Not too bad. So I'm gonna go get the pole light and I'll show you what it looks like. I'll be right back. All right, folks, so here's the Atwood pole light. There's a variety of these available online. Even places like Fleet Farm and Walmart might even have these in the summer. So I think this one was about, I think it was $29. I got it on sale last year. And what I did is I replaced, this just screws off, and I replaced the little dim bulb that these come with, with this super bright LED. This thing is amazing. So the little incandescent bulb it comes with can be seen for two miles. This can be seen for probably five miles on a clear night. It is super bright. It makes night fishing super good, super easy. Highly recommend it. So again, you can use any style pole you want, as long as it's this, this type right here. So this particular one is a two pin. And if you look inside, this one's a two pin also, but you can use the three pin ones. They do fit as well. And so what you do, once this is on your gear track, you just line up this little guide screw. There's a little slot in here. And you just line it up. Fits in, and then you screw it down. So there you have it, folks. Check it out. And this one extends up to really four feet. So there's no reason why you couldn't have two of these. You have a shorter one up in front and a taller one in the back. This does satisfy the Coast Guard requirements and then some. So that's it, folks. What do you think? Uh, should we do a giveaway on the base? Not the pole because this is the only pole I have. So, how what if we do a giveaway on this? So everyone, leave a comment, and the only requirements are is that you live in the continental United States. It's kind of a hassle to send to Hawaii or Puerto Rico or one of our territories in the United States. So let's keep it to the continental US. To be eligible, you have to leave a comment and be located in the continental United States. And then when I pick a winner, I'll provide an email address that you can send me your mailing address and I'll ship it out to you. And I'll, I'll paint it black too before I ship it out to you. So it'll be pretty cool. Or if you want me to leave it white, leave a comment. If you want to paint it purple or blue or whatever color you want, just regular old spray paint works. And that's it folks, this thing is awesome. You could even use this for a camera pole if you wanted to, I don't see why not. It's gonna provide 12 volt and then you could build a pole with a converter inside of it for your GoPro. Or you, you could even put the converter inside here and have it wired into this and then go up and you could have a GoPro mount at the top and you can pop it in and out. This, these things are super handy and there's more uses for these than just lights. So that's it folks. Bassman out. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching Bassman Strikes Kayak Fishing. If you like this video, please click the subscribe and like buttons. If you'd like to be notified of new content, click the bell button. If you have any questions about lures, equipment, etc., please leave a comment. Also, be sure to check out our Facebook page and join our group Black Bass Central. Links will be in the description. We'll see you next time.